Hello everybody and welcome back to this week's vlog. It's Rianne here from Not Just Backs Osteopathy. So this week I'm going to have a little talk about sugar and how it affects your pains in your body. So I'm talking about muscle pain and joint pain. Um, and although we can talk about all sorts of components to the diet, this week it's just particularly about sugar, but other things obviously can have a big effect on why you're getting a lot of body pain, especially, it's not so much for the acute back pains, this is for people who suffer with chronic body pains, um, particularly joints um, and things. So I'm just gonna share the screen. Uh, there we go. Uh, share. Let's just get you in the right place. So there we go, sugar consumption, muscle and joint pain. So let's have a look, so what is sugar? So essentially table sugar, which is sucrose, is made up, it's a disaccharide, so it's got two molecules. One of those is glucose and then the other is fructose. So it's found in lots of products, um, hidden in, in quite a lot of things. So it's really important that you read the food labels. And as you can see at the bottom here, you know, it's contained in, and when you read your food labels, it's syrups and agave, maple, high fructose corn syrup, which is just awful. Um, fruit juice concentrates, lots of that in children's food. Honey and coconut sugar, so it comes in all sorts of forms, but that is, you know, the sucrose basically and the fructose in our, in our products. So, you know, breakfast cereal tends to have a lot in. Um, obviously, if you go for something like shredded wheat, that's very low in, well, hasn't that have, doesn't have any sugar added to it, actually, shredded wheat. But you've got to be careful with granolas, because granola, um, has lots of lots of sugar in so you've got to be careful which ones you buy really look at those labels but things like your pasta sauce so if you're you know feeding your children a pasta sauce then there's quite a lot of sugar in that um, fruit yogurts um, try and stick to your natural yogurts and add your own fruit to it um, there's lots of kefir out there there's um, a protein kefir you can buy called biotiful and it doesn't have that uh, fermented taste so it doesn't taste so sharp on your tongue because obviously fermented foods can taste a little bit sharp. Um, cereal bars, obviously canned baked beans, fruit juices, you know all these things that we've got to try and avoid canned fizzy drinks and cakes. Cakes is the big thing obviously because lots of charities get you to try and bake for them and make them money but actually what's it doing to your health as well at the same time. So how much sugar should we have in our diet? So an adult should have to aim to have no more than 30 grams. So this is a teaspoon is four grams. So that's seven sugar cubes of so those, those little sugar cubes that you get, um, but four grams is your teaspoon. So children, seven to 10 years, 24 grams, and, adult, and children four to six years is 19 grams. So that's not a lot. If you put your 30 grams worth on a bowl uh, and measure it and look at it, you'll think, hmm, that isn't that much. So what's in what? So here we go, um, a pasta sauce. So a third of a pot. So because you wouldn't eat, if you were dishing this up, a third of a pot, what comes to about here, doesn't it? Look at that line there. You wouldn't eat any less than that as an adult, would you, on your pasta? You know, lots of people have half, half a pot, but that's two of your teaspoons a day. So, you know, you're having seven, seven teaspoons of sugar. That's two of your teaspoons of sugar just in that half pot of pasta. Um, a slice of cake. So like a chocolate frosted cake has got 26 grams of sugar in it. So that is your daily allowance used up in one slice of cake. And uh, a chocolate hobnob, Chocolate one's got six grams in per, per knob, and a plain one has got 3.9 grams. So plain knob is one teaspoon of sugar going into your mouth. And how many times do we 
eat just one. Because mm. sugar is addictive. It lights up all these little signals in your brain, just like cocaine would do. So, so have a think about that. You know, sugar is that addictive. It's more addictive than, than all these other drugs. And yet it's, it's not licensed. I mean, it's like alcohol, alcohol is just the same. It's a sugar. However, that is licensed and we, you know, it's, it's spoken about as bad for us, but sugar isn't as much as readily, but you know, it's getting there, it's coming on. So how is sugar, this is the thing now, how is sugar used in our body? So glucose uh, goes around, goes into our cell, through our small intestine, into our cells and gets used up by the cells, by all the body cells um, to make energy. And so anything that then doesn't get used then gets stored away into, into the muscles and different places. Um, fructose, however, is a different thing. So that second molecule of sugar, so half of that sugar molecule is fructose, is a bit like a toxin and it's toxic to us. So it has to go down to the liver to be broken up. Now there are lots, of, there's quite a complicated little chemical pathway. However, um, what happens is that it gets then broken down and made into other molecules. It can, can, it can convert, um, it can use up quite a bit of the fructose. So by that, I mean a handful of blueberries, it can, it can deal with. Anything over that in one go, it can't deal with, and this is what happens. So what it creates in this biochemical pathway is it gets converted to fat. So it increases our bad cholesterol. It elevates the triglycerides, which is a fat. So basically sugar gets converted into fat. And this fat, ends up around our organs, particularly the fructose sugar fat. And that's why skinny, the, you know, when you hear of those skinny people that die of heart attacks, um, this is why, it's because their fat is around their organs. And so they're not, they don't look that fat, but it's stored deeper inside and it compresses, you know, the fat compresses how the organs function. And then, so with, with the fructose, it can then increase your blood pressure um, and it makes your tissues insulin resistant and it leads on to type two diabetes as well. And then what it does do is increase, so this breakdown, the, the products that get broken down create free radicals and these little chemicals then go around and damage our cells and damage our DNA and cause all sorts of trouble. But with that damage, you get inflammation. So like with cholesterol plaques on our, in our arteries and things, it creates an inflammation. And on these little free radicals in our cells create inflammation. And so when you have issues in your joints, it's that inflammation that in, then in, increases that and we, and we get more pain in our bodies. So all those of you that suffer with um, chronic inflammatory things, if you eat a lot of sugar, you will feel worse. And with sugar, I mean alcohol as well. So if you can wean yourself off because obviously diets are, take a long time to actually, it's like a, diets are a work in progress, put it that way. And so it takes a long time for you to take, change your taste buds. So if you can start to wean yourself off, think about replacing one sugary food a day, maybe start if you're on breakfast cereal, if you're on um, toast and marmalade or toast and jam, then try and think of alternatives that you can do to replace that. Um, sorry, my birds are just going for a little fly around the room. <laughs> so basically, uh, the increase in inflammation can then lead on to creating autoimmune problems. So where our body attacks itself. So the, the inflammation then starts to attack the joint. So you can then end up with immune, autoimmune diseases later on in life if you keep eating sugar, 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 sugar. Um, and you know, if you eat 
sugar along with, because generally the sugar comes along with something that's quite high in fat as well. So you think you've got your, your sugar gets to fat and your fat goes to fat. So you've got a double whammy of fat in your body. But really you're looking for having, um, you know, try and make your meals sort of a bit more protein and fat rather than carb and fat. Because that's sort of your standard American diet, carb and fats. And, you know, and then and you think of well, what's that? That sort of pizzas and burgers and um, all those sort of foods. So if you obviously, you know, if you're making your own food, then that's brilliant. Um, but just watch out for puddings, try and avoid those, try and avoid processed meats and other processed foods. So bread is included in a processed food and it is full of rubbish. Uh, you know, you get a bag, you look at the back of the bag some, and then some gluten-free sugar, um, gluten-free breads have sugar added in them. So really avoid those. Um, Obviously you avoid your fast foods, most, you know, McDonald's and Burger Kings and, um, and all that lovely stuff that people queue up miles for. Everybody's addicted to it. It's like, you know, lockdown when it first opened, there were those queues around Salisbury, wasn't there for McDonald's? <laughs> be the last place I'd be in. Uh, anyway. And then you've got to think about what, if you're, if you, you know, you do make your lovely food, what oils you're cooking with and heat treated oils react in different ways. So if you've got vegetable on your, on your shelf, get rid of it. If you've got sunflower oil, get rid of it. Obviously oils are another topic entirely um, than sugar, but just get rid of those two and replace it with a nice organic rapeseed. It can take a high temperature and then use a nice organic um, olive oil um, extra virgin if you're using it on salads and things like that. So obviously being overweight in itself is an add to our joint pains when we have increase in our fat, we get a big belly and it makes our spine increase in its curve and it puts more strain through our joints. So we increase our in, uh, in our back it puts strain through our um, spinal joints, which aren't meant to be weight bearing. But as soon as as soon as we put on weight, <laughs> I'm being spoken to now. As soon as we put on weight, we then increase um, our weight through our joints, and that's what causes them to wear out and become inflamed. And then when you're adding on, on your sugar on top of that, it increases the inflammation, and we we just our pain just continues and continues and continues. The other thing increase in fat and weight does to us is to put obviously just put more weight and strain through our weight bearing joints, our hips and our knees. So you are more prone to wearing these joints out as you get older with osteoarthritis. And also um, with the change in posture, it changes how our shoulders are. So we sit more round shoulders because, you know, we've got this big sort of belly coming out. And, uh, and it puts strains on our tendons. So, you know, as we, as we age, as we get over 40, our, our tendons do tend to degenerate as well. And so then it can give you uh, an increased chance of having tendon issues. And if you've had shoulder tendon issues, you know they're a real pain to get rid of because they take poor blood supply, you don't heal very well, and it takes months and probably a year or you know, maybe up to two years to sort out. So you don't want that. So keep nice and slim, keep off your sugar, only use it as a treat. You know, if it's your birthday, have a bit of cake. But otherwise, if you can try and wean yourself off sugars, the better you'll be. And not just obviously for body pains, but also for um, heart disease, birds tweeting, heart disease, cancers, you know, you, everything. So really think about your sugars go go along one day spend time working out how many teaspoons of sugar you have a day and let me know let me know how many teaspoons of sugar you have in your meals each day see if you can work it out it's a good oh and just going over fruit sugar so keep your portion you know your five a day of fruit and veg 
use one of those as fruit. So have a serving of fruit um, as, as, as your five a day and the rest veg, because obviously fructose is in fruit. It's the same sugar as in sucrose. So fructose is the same fructose, but with fruit, it then surrounded by fiber and that slows down the process of getting it into your bloodstream. So you get a trickle of fructose going through when you eat fruit. Whereas when you have an orange juice, that will go all straight to your liver, immediately gets absorbed really quickly in the intestine and goes straight to your liver. So that's why um, fizzy can drinks and orange juice uh, and apple juice and all that sort of thing are really bad for us. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an insight into sugar. I look forward to seeing you again. Maybe we'll talk about fats because they are just as interesting or even more interesting, I think, than sugar, but sugar is the killer. Um, and I'll see you soon. Let's just uh, stop the share. Sorry about the birds and see you next week. Bye.